Welcome to Between Over and Next with your hosts, Holly and Robert, a happily married couple who explore the space between what was, what is, and what's to come. From career changes to navigating life's uncertainties, this dynamic duo will empower you to live your happiest life at every age and stage. So get ready because your journey with Holly and Robert starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Between Over and Next. Hi, Holly. Hi, Robert. Today's episode, I want to reflect on the transition between the seasons of summer going into fall and post Labor Day. So if you're listening to this episode right now, it is an episode that we produced with intention to be right after Labor Day and to inspire you to embrace the new beginning and to stay uplifted. That is the goal of today's episode, Robert. Well, Labor Day signals for a lot of people the the official end of summer, right? Even though summer doesn't end until September 20th. So why does Labor Day feel so different? Well, I think for me, it was always tied to back to school. I didn't look forward to going back to school the way most kids do today. I think when we grew up and went through elementary school, School wasn't maybe as exciting as it is now. Curriculum wasn't as full and vibrant as it may be now. But to me, going back to school, that's the way Sunday nights felt to me, but magnified. It definitely signaled the end of summer, for sure. You know, a lot of pools closed and with the beach, the lifeguards go off duty, except maybe for the weekends. Our pool here basically closes. I think they may extend it one weekend. There's a lot of changes that are happening. From August to September. Yeah. Colleges certainly are back in swing. Well, School, I think, predominates that whole Labor Day experience. Your summer activities transition into fall activities. So a lot of people have brought their kids back to school and settled them in. And there are some parents that are experiencing empty nest syndrome. I was just talking to Lindsay, our daughter, who is a 3D art teacher And I asked her, what does this time of year feel like to you? Because we're in countdown mode between now and Labor Day as we're recording this episode. I commented last night that everything felt quiet because this is a very popular vacation week for people. Yes. Right, you get the extra day on Monday. Public schools in this area, they don't start before Labor Day. Right, like in Florida and other states, they do start before. So New York, New Jersey generally starts after Labor Day. Some will start later in the week after Labor Day. So I asked Lindsay, as a teacher, what does this time feel like to her? And she said, nervous excitement. I thought she packaged that perfectly as a teacher. She said, it's scary and familiar at the same time. She also said something about the senses because she said there is that sound of the school bell. That kind of, you go from the starting a class to that bell ringing. So certainly a different mode getting to class versus waiting in class for the bell to ring. There were analog clocks in the room, I remember, and you knew exactly where that second hand is, and that clock when the bell rings. The bell signals instant movement in a classroom. To ending go to your the next period. class. Correct. She also mentioned about how the school supplies smelled. Fresh reams of paper or the way a box of crayons smells when you open it. Well, beginnings have new smells. I love buying new notebooks, but I mentioned in our last episode about the remarkable that you bought me, the tablet. And quite frankly, I think every student should have No more paper. I mean, I remember the days, did you used to put reinforcements on loose leaf paper? Well, before they had reinforced paper. And I remember I used to lick the little circle Uh and slip it over the metal ring onto the loose leaf paper and let it dry so that you would think that little tiny paper ring would be the thing that keeps the page into the 
book, but that didn't work so well either. So something we always did is go to the U.S. Open tennis. That happens is, over Labor Day. Right. And we always brought Alex for his birthday that is coming up. He was born on Labor Day. So that's a big thing for us because- Well, sometimes the way, Labor, like this year, Labor Day falls on his birthday, the second. And he was born on a Monday. So but it, but happy, there are some, birthday, happy birthday, Alex. Happy, birth, birth, happy birthday, Alex, right? So it would have been yesterday after this release. This release is the day after his birthday. That is correct. That was always a special time. Same thing like when we used to get the apartment in Avon by the Sea. That didn't end until Labor Day. Right. Like this year, if we had it, you kind of get gypped a little bit because the last Labor Day weekend falls on the last weekend of August. In the years we had it, it went to that fifth weekend because Labor Day was late those years. Those are very special memories. We're wearing some new branded apparel, Robert and I. We are in a, a black T-shirt and a white V-neck sure. T-shirt with our yeah. HR yeah. brand on it. But yeah. importantly, I'm wearing white. And that's, I think, another thing that happens with the shift between August and September or post Labor Day. Okay? Oh, there is someone who's co concocted the fact I that you shouldn't wear be wearing white. white. I don't have a problem with that. You know, one of the things that <laughs> used to be a big part of my Labor Day weekend growing up has gone away, doesn't exist anymore on Labor Day weekend, but it was always a highlight of my Labor Day weekend was the Jerry Lewis muscular dystrophy telethon that used to happen Sunday into Monday of Labor Day weekend. And it was a 24-hour, 27-hour, really, thing. And I would always look forward to it, always either stay up late watching it or getting up really early, 5 o'clock in the morning and flicking on the TV, and there it was, on and would love watching the money come in in total and all the the stars that were on it and Jerry Lewis isn't alive any longer and the whole telethon thing. You, you like that. We'll include a of, link uh, to that. So for those of you to... Did you ever do a, a muscular dystrophy telethon in your backyard? They used to have the kit no. to run your own... No. Your but, own tele, your own carnival. Even though carnival. this summer we tuned into some new series and watched some movies, which was fun, the main reason we really did tune in to some other programming was because there was some regular programming that wasn't on. I mean, we're enjoying Big Brother, and that goes into the fall. Well, the summer is reruns. It's, right. You so know, goes into I hiatus. am looking forward to Jeopardy being back. Okay. That is one thing I'm really looking forward to. But another thing I was thinking about as I reflect is when we used to have the PT Cruiser convertible. Now, what was my threshold, Robert, in that car? 80, really. 80. Okay, otherwise you gave me a blanket, right? Like when it was 70. Right. I mean, you put the heat on, too. We've done plenty of times you have the heat on. But, but I 80 have... so typically if... was your threshold. So if you have a convertible the emotions attached to that because there's such a freedom. To me, it was like a vacation on wheels being next to Robert and still being kissed by the sun. Our emotions influence our outlook on the months ahead. And the other thing before we get into the gusto of this episode is- We're not into the gusto yet? No gusto yet, okay? We are sh reflecting on the end of summer and we're talking about some nostalgic things in the transition, but- Labor Day upon us feels abrupt, and it signals a shift in energy and routine. So there is no question that there is a universal experience of time seeming to speed up as the seasons change, and this is definitely impacting our mindset. I feel it's because we're getting older, but I feel like everybody feels that way. Like, do you believe it's going to be September already? Like, don't I say that year after year after year? Well, uh, <laughs> yes. Do you believe the summer's over? It just yes. started. Yes, I think that for me, certainly, spring and summer go faster than winter does mm -hmm. and fall. I am a bigger fan of spring and summer than I am of fall and winter. So I think your favorite seasons go faster. 
Yeah, but summer, I think, for some reason, there's something special about like soaking it all in every single day. Like, and I know you're you're a fan of sunlight, so that is something that also is impacted as we change the seasons. Could you say the days keep getting shorter? Well, daylight. Yes. Right. The days. Right. Right. The days. The days they are still twenty four hours a day. Hours. Okay. Okay. But yes, and there's seasonal light disorder or, or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. That's a proven thing well, we're that gonna... we get depressed more easily during times where we get less daylight. Right. So I want to uplift your mood. So I have created, okay, twenty eight tips to optimize an optimistic attitude after Labor Day that will help smooth the transitions. It'll help you shift your focus to a positive outlook. It'll keep your mindset strong even during challenging times. And these tips will help you prioritize what matters most to you, what's most important to you. Let's start with that back-to-school work mindset. Tip number one to establish a consistent morning routine, whether it be with some stretching, a healthy breakfast, some people like some meditation to ground them. And tip two is to plan your week. This is something that every expert says to do, to take your Sundays, plan your work and personal activities. Tip three, embracing the structure. Use a planner or digital tool. And I am going to put in the show notes some of them that I discovered. It's really important. In order to reduce stress, you have to be more organized. Tip number four is setting clear boundaries between our work and our personal lives, especially when you're working from home, because it's so important to prevent burnout. Now, this tip is something you're going to hear a lot on our podcast about practicing gratitude. I strongly believe that everybody should start and end each day by writing down at least three things that you're grateful for. When you mark them down, they can serve as a happy record for you as a pick-me-up. It helps you celebrate all the good things in life. It can be as simple as sitting in a chair during work or right now and say, I am happy to have these few moments of peace in my day. There are gratitude apps to keep it easy and simple and a place for you to document these thoughts, these feelings. I thought about what I'm grateful for. And my number one thing I'm grateful for, actually, it's not a thing. It's you. So I thank you for being by my side, for being my partner. You are my soulmate, my friend, the person that I love going through life with. I I love starting our day and ending our day together and everything in between. I am I'm very fond of you. Thank you, honey. I'm fond of you. I'm grateful for our family, and I'm really, really grateful for this podcast between over and next. Me too. Uh, But what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for the place I am in my life. Where I live, who I'm with, what I do. Those types of things are all things that I am happy about. Do you practice gratitude every day the way I ask and invite everybody and encourage everybody listening and watching to do? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, I don't write stuff down. I don't keep lists. I don't have a daily mantra that I stand there while I'm brushing my teeth. I don't do any of that. I start off with a good mood. I put myself in a place that I feel good, and that sometimes is being up early or watching the sunrise and all that. And if that is how I put myself in a state of gratitude, then yeah. I love the location of our unit because really being on the golf course really does give us the, the landscape that really feels so good. Well, I need, as you know, I need stimulation. Mm, well, you okay. don't have to tell me that. <laughs> if, you, if you recall in the past, right, when yes. we, in our, our other home, uh-huh. 
I would start my day differently. I would start my day generally mm -hmm. with the television. Yeah. You know, sitting down in front of the TV. Which is not healthy, by the way. Now, my morning stimulation mm -hmm. consists of me literally standing in our kitchen, uh -huh. looking out of our sliding door. With your cup of coffee. My cup of coffee. And my phone is there. But I'm mainly looking out onto the golf course and the trees and the lake that we have there and the wildlife and watch the day begin, watch the sunrise. And that, to me, sets my day in the right direction. It's like amazing that we're on this spinning globe rotating around the sun each and every day and watching how the sun rises in a different spot across the sky and the plants know that and they get less sunlight and they react accordingly. Okay. So the plants need water. practicing gratitude was tip number five, staying positive. There are free apps like 365 Gratitude Journal or Grateful. Tip number six is celebrating small wins and achievements. I wrote a great blog article about that. It is really important every day to think about what you did accomplish versus what you didn't accomplish in order to keep your motivation high. Tip seven, shift your perspective. See the changing season as a fresh start to set new goals or embark on a new project. So whether it be reading a book, starting a new hobby, organizing your home. Tip eight, creating a fun fall bucket list. I'm not even a fan of the word bucket list, just like I'm not really a fan of the word bonding. But what I will tell you is creating a list of things you want to look forward to is great. So we love to go apple picking. We used to love going to the pumpkin patch with the kids. Whether you go on a hike, we've done that with Heidi and Rob. Now, friends. We embrace the change in season. We live in a part of the country where the leaves change. It's a feat of nature that's quite spectacular. <laughs> so to not get out and enjoy that fleeting moment in the course of 12 months, you know, the colors are at their peak. Take a road trip, at least in the Northeast. That's what I love about the change of season. So that makes me happy. And I love when we do that. You do a lot of grilling you know, in the summer. And as long as the weather's nice, you will continue to do that year long. But it's a nice opportunity to maybe make some soups or try some seasonal recipes because the slow cooker comes out, which I promised Robert, and I'm saying it here now. You are all my witness. I am going to be making a slow cooker meal. Okay, you might think I'm copping now. I am not. I am going to make a delicious slow cooker meal, and he's going to say, mmm. He's going to go out and do an errand, and he's going to come home, and he's going to say, it smells so good. But then he's going to expect me to do it again, and I can't promise that. I want to see it happen once. It's going to. I promise you, that is happening this fall. It is something I'm looking forward to. Tip nine is to prioritize relaxation to boost creativity. I really do believe the more relaxed you are, the more you can um, allow for greater appreciation of your ideas and those of others. Be intentional and purposeful in setting time aside for relaxation. I know a lot of people that will say, you know what? At 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock, I'm going to take a break and just read a chapter in my book just to reset your mind. Tip 10, to embrace downtime for reflection on past achievements and brainstorm new ideas. Tip 11, pause. It's all about the between over and next moments, Robert, right? As the year winds down, consider taking a day off, step back from a project, or simply slow down. The break can recharge your energy and perspective. Tip 12, reflect without pressure. Reassess your goals, make changes, or decide it's okay to leave some things unfinished until the new year. I think it's important to plan social gatherings with friends and family. There's no question it'll make you feel happier. And tip 14, to embrace cozy comforts. And this is something Robert and I really do love. Because as the weather gets a little cooler, I do like the comfort of a cozy blanket, beverages like hot chocolate, and candlelit evenings. So let's talk about weather changes and its impact on your mood. Tip 16. This is 
vital. Take a short walk during daylight hours. Remember, we were doing that regularly. We're mm-hmm. going to go back to that. And it's important because exposure to natural light helps regulate your mood and energy levels. Tip 16 is to consider light therapy in the morning to simulate natural sunlight and boost your mood. Now, this is really important, is staying active. Move your body regularly. Physical activity releases endorphins that help maintain a positive attitude. So what do we do every morning, Robert? Almost every morning. We go out and play pickleball. That's right. But no matter what, keep moving. Tip 18, join a fitness class or group. The social aspects can increase your motivation and provide a sense of community. Uh, I, I, I look forward to my mahjong every Friday. Mm-hmm. I look forward to game nights without friends. Yep. I used to love leading my indoor cycling classes at the Y. I do miss all of the people that used to attend those classes. We're going to reflect on the year ending and setting intentions in the final quarter. Tip 19, journal your thoughts. Focus on what you've accomplished, lessons learned, moments of joy. It's all about seeing the positives in your life. Tip 20, reassess your goals. I always say plan, do, review, assess, repeat. Review the goals you set at the beginning of the year and adjust as needed. And what's really important is setting realistic goals for the remaining months of the year. Tip 21, focus on one thing at a time. People need to reduce the overwhelm. And choose one area of focus for the final quarter. We are in the midst of doing that. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to share that with you as we reassess what we need to prioritize in the next few months before 2025 happens, which we know is going to come like that. So whether it's personal growth, career advancement, or relationship building, dedicate your energy to one focus to be more fulfilled. Tip 22, and I'm so happy. My favorite number is this. Practice self-compassion. Always be kind to yourself. Understand that it's okay if everything doesn't go as planned. Let's talk about the between over next mindset, Robert. Talk about embracing the in-between because it's a very natural part of life. We don't want to rush through them. What makes you feel more grounded and optimistic about the future? Our ability to remain positive. I think life always throws you curveballs. Well, it's important, tip 24, is to be flexible and adaptive well, and resilient. There you go. I think right? resilience... And being open. Being open to change. You're somewhat prepared for it, and you can anticipate a lot of change. You know, some you can, and that's that's life. But as you get older and wiser, hopefully... I think you get derailed less because you understand what's important and what's not as important. I don't think anything is not important, but I think there are things that are not as important that tends to take energy. I think we have a finite amount of time in which to give. We need to sleep. We need to be awake. We need to eat. We need to clean ourselves. So the amount of time that we have that we can choose to do what we choose to do is much more limited than we realize. And I think one of the things that I know now that maybe I didn't know 20 years ago was that I'm done spending time on things that don't get me to where I need to go and don't fulfill me along the way. Period. End of story. There is no discussion point with that. And that holds true for people, things, and situations. Yeah, well, I think as you age, you really realize what matters most. And you can really figure out what you need to do to move forward. Tip 25, visualize your next chapter. What do you want your next few months to look like? It's important to imagine the possibilities and create the life you want, no matter what changes or curveballs come at you. Tip 26 is creating a vision board, and I've done this, and I love it. And very often people host vision board parties. Mm. I have to say, I think more women mm, do this yes. than men, mm, yes. right? Mm. But I love the, the collage and the art yeah. of cutting out words and pictures and images. I've even had to do it for some of the focus groups I've been a part of. Yeah. And when you gather those images, quotes, and other inspirational items, 
they represent your aspirations for your next chapter. The last two tips. Tip 27, to practice positive affirmations. Phrases like, I am capable of navigating change. Or, I look forward to new opportunities. Both of those can help you shift your mindset. This is so important. Surround yourself with positivity. Another thing that I've realized more than ever at 61 years young, engage with positive content, whether they're books or podcasts like Between Over and Next or others that you may love. And importantly, the people who uplift you and inspire you. Closing thoughts. Let's get ready. This is post-Labor Day, everybody. It is time to start something full of potential. Embrace this time with enthusiasm and an open mind. Have some small, manageable goals. They could be related to personal growth, work, or relationships. But keep the momentum going as the year is winding down. And please enjoy the journey. It's not just about reaching the destination. Savor the little moments and find joy in everyday experiences. I really hope that this episode has inspired you with lots to look forward to. I really believe this is an episode that you can listen to over and over again. I'd love you to share it with your friends and family or anyone that you know needs a dose of positivity post-Labor Day. Let this episode be a reminder to stay optimistic and focused on what's ahead. Well, I agree. We have a big what's ahead, you and I. So we do. You go through a few life changing pivots in your life, and we're about to go through one. I always say the best is yet to come. So enjoy every moment and live your happiest, most fulfilled life at every age and stage. And we want to thank all of you once again for listening to Between Over and Next, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Between Over and Next. We hope you enjoyed this episode and found it meaningful and insightful. If you value it to be worthwhile, please share it with your friends and family. We would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to write a review for us. Your feedback will help us continue to create content that resonates with you. And don't forget, in the show notes, you can find all the relevant links mentioned in this episode, from accessing free downloads to visiting our website and more. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. Simply send us an email. Our email address is hello at hollyandrobert.com. We're always excited to connect with our listeners. So until next time, thank you again for joining us on Between Over and Next. Thank you for listening to Between Over and Next, the podcast that navigates the twists and turns of life with courage, laughter, and a whole lot of inspiration. Tune in every Tuesday to hang out with Holly and Robert on your favorite podcast platform. Visit hollyandrobert.com and follow them on social media to ignite your passion and fuel your dreams.